uh, that was Tony Wagner, and that's what I support in Dr. Bearden's vision for Fayette County Schools. And I'd also like to include some other things beyond Dr. Tony Wagner that I think are needed as well in our school system. Uh, this is a picture of um, Art Costa, and he came up with, in 2008, he came out with the Habits of the Mind. And uh, Dr. Tony Wagner's um, information came out in around 2010. So some of the information that uh, Dr. Tony Wagner has was taken from the Habits of the Mind, but some of, some of the information um, I would like to also include separately. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. And there are 16 habits. I'm only going to go through three or four that I think would be important for us in our school system. Here are some graphics of the 16 habits. <coughs> Habit one beyond Tony Wagner is persistence. And our students need to be able to persist in solving problems. When they're doing math and it gets challenging, it gets tough and they don't know what to do, we need to keep trying. Our teachers need to show them uh, persistence as well. Very important 21st century skill, not to give up. Also important in the habits of the mind is managing impulsivity. We may have a great idea. Um, we may want to have an invention or be an entrepreneur. But we have to balance that with managing our impulsivity to make sure that we don't uh, do something that would have a dire consequence. So in looking at managing impulsivity, that's an important skill for our kids and for the members of the board to have as well. Also very important, being that I'm a math and science teacher, is striving for accuracy. We want to make sure that in every decision that we make, in all our communications, in all our accounting, we have accuracy. We give out accurate information and we don't just um, take something at face value. We look deeply into the matter and we, we uh, thoroughly research it so we can be accurate in all our, all our decisions and all our communications. This one from Habits of the Mind, our posture, is also very important. Taking responsible risks. We need to be sure that when we're making decisions that involve our children, we are responsible and we don't take unnecessary risks. And we make sure that everything we do is well researched and uh, backed up by experience. So we're going to take risks. There are some risks but they must be responsible risks. Okay, um, the next thing I'd like to talk about are the different uh, areas of education that we have. We have regular education. Uh, most students are in regular education. Then we have special education students for uh, lear with learning disabilities. We have our gifted education program for the high achievers. And we also have advanced placement. Now, we have more programs than this, but um, these are basically the outline of what, uh, what we have. So I have some ideas about these programs as well to hopefully generate some resources for our school system. All right, so what's the difference between the last two? Gifted education, uh, you have criteria um, that are established, and I'm about to go over the criteria, to um, be in gifted education. Advanced placement, you don't necessarily have to be designated as gifted, but you can apply to get into advanced courses in high school for college credit. And those are, are put together by the college board, and all of the assessments are done through the college board. Okay, some ideas about expanding our revenue stream because right now we're facing a budget deficit and we have to come up with $20 million. So we're looking at how, how are we going to do that. Are we going to cut um, programs? Are we going to, what are we going to do? So uh, this is a 
about gifted education, and this is from uh, the state of Georgia. A student who demonstrates a high degree of intellectual and or creative ability and a high degree of motivation or excels in a specific field. So um, some of our students are designated as gifted through testing. Does anyone know any, of any students? Yes? Yeah, we have four. Your own children? Four of your own children are gifted. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Kate, my daughter teaches the gifted children, and I know several of the students that are in my class, and my wife is, is, was formerly a, a registered nurse, and she's gone in and carved up eyeballs and frogs and everything you can think of. Those children that are in that, those programs are incredibly gifted. And uh, it's just exciting to, to be around them. Oh, I'm glad I have people who have experience with, with gifted education and having gifted students. This will be important to you, and it's important to me too. Um, uh, here's some ideas. Uh, the eligibility criteria for placement um, involves assessment of mental ability, achievement, creativity, and motivation, and the performance standards that must be achieved um, for each student to become eligible. Now, here's, here's how students um, get into the gifted program. If they're tested in grades K through two, and they score in the 99th percentile, and they they also meet another criteria, in, they, they can be in the gifted program. However, if students um, in grades 3 through 12 are in the 96th percentile, then they are eligible for the gifted program. So what I, what I think that we should do is we might be missing some students who have these abilities who can qualify for these programs. In addition, the gifted program right now is a uh, designation for all subjects to be gifted. But if we have a student who may have an expertise, say, in, in language, or say, say, in math, and maybe they're not as proficient in language, they, sh they, they can be in advanced courses, and we should have those advanced courses. Now, the, the thing about gifted is there's extra funding from the state and the QBE for a gifted student. There is also extra funding for a special education so. so the proposal is to create additional gifted streams to try and capture the people who are contributing to the state of 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 the I think we want to be sure that we're not missing any abilities because we may have students who, yes, answer to your question. We may have a student who is extremely gifted in, say, math, but may not do as well in language. And we don't want, we don't want that student not to be served and not to reach their full potential because they may not have um, ability in all academic subjects. So I think there's work that we could do in order to meet the needs of, of our students because uh, they all have something that they're motivated and interested in, motivated to learn and interested in. But and but don't they do that in high school just because you're in one, you might be in gifted or um, AP math but not science and not English. You might be in just English or just reading. So don't, aren't, aren't we already doing this? Uh, yes, we are in high school by choice. But we may have a student that has extremely high language ability that's not in gifted, not in the gifted program because maybe they didn't qualify because of not having that same ability in math. So in the elementary. Um, they wouldn't qual they wouldn't be in gifted at all. In elementary. Right. Because it starts in middle school that they differentiate between being in gifted and being in singular gifted classes. So we're talking just K through five, not well, being. Right now, in elementary, you have a pull-out model where 